everybody. Hey, Welcome everybody. to Comedy Doctors. I'm Michael Panzeki, your host. Thank you for joining us. Look, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now. A lot of problems, a lot of frustration, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger, a lot of arguing, a lot of people getting upset over the small stuff. We need to lighten up, people. So what we did over at Comedy Flow is we put together a show with great comedians from all over the country who are going to help us laugh off some of these problems, okay? It's really hard to be upset when you're laughing. Um, I personally am a comedian for over 25 years and a counselor for over 35 years. So if it gets, gets heavy, I can handle whatever happens. But we couldn't possibly do this all by ourselves. So let me get a word from our sponsor. The Big Apple Shopping Bazaar Jewelry Exchange and Salon and Spa Suites. Located off Atlantic Avenue in beautiful Delray Beach, Florida, this unique mini mall will transport you to the streets of New York City for a one-of-a-kind shopping experience. The Big Apple Shopping Bazaar provides shoppers with over 65 one-of-a-kind specialty boutiques with amazing items at fantastic prices. For more information, go to BigAppleShoppingBazaar.com. So tonight we have a great show for you. We brought in some heavy hitters to deal with the heavy problems. I'm going to introduce our first comedian. You've seen him all over. You've seen him on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno and Comics Unleashed. I've worked with him many times. He's also running for president, ladies and gentlemen. Please help me welcome to the show my good friend, Mike Marino. Hey, what's going on, man? It's nice to be part of your show. It's good to have you, Mike. How's the campaign going? Pretty good, man. We're selling shirts <laughs> like crazy. Marino 2020. We can do it. Good. Oh, well, you're my candidate. I'll tell you right now. I'm voting for you. How Remember, you, you don't know none, you don't see none, you don't say none. That's, that's America. That's right. That's right. So how, how's everything going for you at, in, in Jersey? How's everything going? You in Jersey or L.A.? This is New Jersey. That's a bar. That's called my mother's basement. Nice. Okay. Well, welcome to the show, Mike. I know you're going to help us out. We're going to try to help some people. Let me bring in our, second, our next comedian. Um, you've seen her on Comedy Central. And the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. I was watching some of her videos today. She's very funny. We're very happy to have her on the show. Veronica Mosey, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everybody. I don't know if I can actually give you decent advice, but I'll try my best. Yeah, well, you know what? If we just make them laugh, I think that'll be good. I'll try. I think, it'll be, I think that, that's what my specialty has usually been. <laughs> that's why you're here, Veronica. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And let's get to our third comedian and actor. Uh, he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm, Fatal Attraction. I, I couldn't be better. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Well, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, in California at least, there's a pandemic going on. So we're all, <laughs> I don't know about Jersey, but, it, but we're all sort of quarantined. We have to stay inside. So that's what's been going on. And I've been, uh, you know, just composing music and writing novels and just trying to keep busy. Writing novels? Really? No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. I, I, I'm not writing novels. Uh, I'm work, we're working on the show and doing some comedy from home. I'm a little tired of Zoom and my, myself. Uh, it's been, I also do counseling with teenagers. I do these groups with kids in their houses oh, on Zoom. You. Yeah, you know what? I, I just did one tonight. I feel really good about it. It's uh, it's the Big Apple Shopping Bazaar, jewelry exchange, and salon and spa suites. Located. Um, wow. <laughs> I don't think our sponsor paid twice, did they? <laughs> they don't. They only paid for one. And, and I'll tell you something. That mall, that that is New York. I thought I was in New York when I was looking at that. Yes, it's like it's like it's like uh, Disney World for senior citizens from New York. It's uh, it's quite amazing. So what you guys know why we're here. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to give me some problems. They got you got a problem? You got a problem? They're going to give me some problems. We're, I'm going to we're going to we're going to mull them over and we're going to try to make people laugh. We're going to make fun of the problems and see if anybody uh, still feels upset after we talk about the problem. So you guys got something for me? You got something for us? Hey comedy doctors, this is Dave from South Korea. One of the things that irritates me is seeing some Facebook posts from my friends back in the United States who complain about having to wear masks. Listen, folks, we're in a pandemic. Wearing a mask, washing your hands, maintaining social distance, these are very simple steps that can be used to squash the curve and kill the virus. Nobody's trying to impede with your civil liberties. 
We're just trying to control the virus. So do your part, make a difference, and get through this together. All right. Thanks. All right. So he got a question. Yes. <laughs> was that a, was that a question? Was that a comedy doctor's question? Yes, that was for us. That was for I, us. Didn't seem like a problem. It seems like the truth. Yeah, it seems like more <laughs> wrapped up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm t I'm t I don't know. I'm tired of masks. I'll be honest with you. I don't know how you guys feel. I'm a little over it. But right. I'm also staying home with a six year old all the time and I pretty right. much want to, you know, just end it. Um but uh yeah, I don't know what the guy what he wants, but I think I, I he doesn't seem like he's in a bad mood or he's hurting at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Yeah, I, I, the, the problem with masks for a lot of people is, and I don't, I'm not in this situation, when you're out working, like my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, a lot of people have to be out. My my niece is an OT therapist, and she's working with COVID patients in a, in a, in a, in a sister living place, and they're passing all the time. Those people have to wear masks, you know, all the time, 24, whatever, 12, 7. Uh uh, we're, those of us who don't have to do that all the time, uh, masks are not a big problem for me. I, I go out, I pick up groceries, I, you know, go to the pick up mail, talk to neighbors. But I think, you know, as far as that other gentleman is concerned, it's not a, it's not a question, it's not a problem. It's, it, it's the truth. I mean, it has nothing to do with civil liberties. It has to do. Yeah, and I guess he got, he got frozen. I guess the problem is maybe paying attention to things that upset you. Uh, what I'm going to do for Halloween this year is I'm going to wear a mask of a guy who's not wearing a mask. <laughs> I think that should cover me pretty good. And I also came up with an idea today for Halloween. What are these kids? These kids aren't, nobody's going to let, nobody's going to answer the door. Kids aren't going out for trick or treat this year. Do you think? You don't think so? I don't think so. Do you think so? I think my, I think they will. I live in New Jersey too. My, right. I don't know where you're, where you're at. I'm in Union. Florida. I'm in Florida. Scotch Plains. That's, oh yeah, not too far away. But I, 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 uh, I think people will do the the mask thing. Uh, maybe under. I don't know. For me, I, I, every time I read CDC stuff, it'll say if you cannot be six feet away from someone, wear a mask. So I always think about that. Like if I if I, I don't have the mask on, like if I like tell you I went to like a garden center, I'm like looking around because all I do is buy mulch now since my career's over, and <laughs> I. Uh, I, I, you know, I have a mask that's pulled down because I'm outside and I'm like 7,000 feet from people and some woman's like, you're supposed to wear your mask. I'm like, I yeah. you're not, I think that woman's just going to die of loneliness, is my yeah. point. But I, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think my kid's going to do the Halloween thing for sure. Oh, uh, sure. She'll just stand really far away from the door and they'll throw the candy at her. Right. I was, I moved recently in, in, uh, in, uh, from my condo, I was on the elevators wearing a mask, and this woman was not wearing a mask and gave, told me I shouldn't be wearing a mask. And I said, look, I just like to avoid conflict on the elevator in our condo, especially while I'm moving. But yeah, she gave me a hard time for wearing a mask. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I can't, you can't win. She said it was a political statement. I said it was just a way to avoid conflict on the elevator. <laughs> Everybody should wear the mask. That's that. That's and if that. you don't have a mask, you can buy one on my website, MikeMarino.net. They say, make America <laughs> uh -huh. Italian again. There you go, Mike. Absolutely. Mike, Wear hey, your mask. My wife's Italian. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> can All I right. tell you a quick mask story yes, that happened to yes. me in the grocery store? Please, please do, Veronica. This woman was, so this, this is a true story. I was in line. And I'm in the 15 items or less line, right? And I, I can't stand when someone has like more than 15 items. It is ethically, morally reprehensible. <laughs> and this woman was in front of me. And I literally, I leaned in just to see how many items she had in her cart. And she turns around and she literally says, six feet away, please. Oh, my like God. that. And she had like one of those giant, they look like a big jock strap masks. Like, yeah. I don't know if you, they're huge. Anyway. I said, well, 15 items or less, please. And then she got really angry with me and told me that, you know, I had no right to, you know, have my, her health affected by me. And I said, you're not gonna, you know, you, she, she, it was just, it was the funniest thing. I said, well, if you're gonna be the purveyor of rules, <laughs> then you need to follow the rules and you have 23 items in your cart right now. And she was like, that's not the same thing. But I thought, you know what? I, I was actually very hurt by her not having those items 
counted properly, but apparently her health is more important than my time. Yeah, <laughs> I know. How did you resolve it? Um, I just told her, I, I told her, she said, literally, this is what happened. And my daughter was with me, so it's horrible. She's six, but she knows I'm a comedian. So she turns around, she goes, you were on my ass. Literally, just like that. And I, I absolutely was not. I was maybe five feet and three quarters of a foot next to her. I can't do math. But, uh, and then I said, you're not going to die of COVID. You're going to, you're going to die of loneliness. I did say that. So. <laughs> you did? I also told her, I, I also said nobody had been on her ass in over 40 years. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, I'm a terrible person. That's awesome. Now yeah. you, your daughter. And she was angry. And then the cashier gave stickers to my daughter and she said, and it was, she was like a woman sort of like this, you know, saying, okay, can we curse on here? Can we curse here? We're, we're, we're trying to re go ahead, do what you want oh, to do. Clean. No, no. Yeah. She literally, she goes, let me tell you something right now. She goes, my opinion is you don't want to get sick. Don't go to a freaking grocery store. Okay. <laughs> and I, yes, I just felt so vindicated. Wow. How long ago did this happen, Veronica? Just a couple of weeks ago. I was at the yeah. shop right. It's good to see you're getting over it and moving on with it and yeah. not lingering. So your daughter is five, you said? She's six. Six? And she knows you're a comedian. She does. Does she understand? Does she want to be a comedian? I don't know. She, You know, she did tell me the other day, which I thought was Cause sometimes I'll do voices when I just do things like wash her hair. Like I saw welcome to the salon, you know, like stupid stuff like that. And she said, mom, don't you think that doing voices is really mean? And I was like, what are you virtue signaling? Like the six, <laughs> like, it was the craziest thing. And I, and I started thinking about it. I was like, is it mean? Do you yeah. guys think it's mean to do voices or no. impress the people? No, might be a little nutty. It's <laughs> nutty. <laughs> Imagine doing a bunch of different voices to your six-year-old. She might grow up wondering who you are, Ma. <laughs> I like the way you said she knows I'm a comedian. Like, she goes, she's six and she knows I'm a comedian. It's like you didn't yeah. lie to her and pretend you do but something she, else. So she knows to expect deviant behavior. Yeah. is what I'm saying. That's that's pretty much it. All right, I, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for the next one. I think that guy. Okay, so this is from Eddie from Buffalo, New York. I have a wife and two teenage daughters. Needless to say, when it's family movie night, I'm always outvoted. How can I get them to throw in an occasional action flick? Sometimes a guy just needs to watch John Wick kick some ass. I'm up to here with these tear jerkers. Uh, I think that's tough, but I think you gotta suck it up and watch The Notebook as often as your family wants you to watch The Notebook. And then when they're, you know, out in the garden or in the yard, you put on John Wick because it could, well, how old's your daughter? I mean, I don't know how old his daughter is. Because that stuff is, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, well, teenagers, they should be able to take it. But if they're uncomfortable with it, like my son, when he was young, you know, if there was, I was watching something that was blood or violence, he'd just walk out of the room and he was, he was young. Uh, so if it makes them uncomfortable, uh, and, and they say that, but you gotta, you gotta talk to them. You, you can't, you can't just talk to us because we know nothing. Uh, but talk to your, talk to your daughters and, and your wife and see if that action stuff, John Wick quality action stuff, uh, uh, bothers them. If it bothers them, then I think you gotta be a good daddy and uh, and just act eat. And then when you're on your own, like bring a television into the bathroom, like most men do, and then watch John Wick. <laughs> well, here's what I say you do. There's a lot of action adventure shows that are good for the wife and the kids, like mine. It's called Make America Italian Again. It's on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Just go to Mike Marino Live on YouTube with the kids. Mike, do you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah, Mike. Could you I'm a little confused that? about that. I just want to make sure I got that. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much, Stuart. It's a pleasure. Always, always I have a YouTube have. channel. and the... <laughs> <laughs> What's it called, Mike? Can't stop laughing. What's it called? What's the name of your YouTube channel, please? I forgot. Mike Marino Live. Oh, okay. And you're running for president, right? Well, in the web series, yeah. In real life, no. I got things to do, like this type of a TV series. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't understand it, Veronica. I mean, how many? Can't, don't most houses have two more than one TV? I mean, he wants. I think we have, we have four. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking like my four. attic. 
space. We have a finished attic, and then I have we have one in the basement. There's one in the living room downstairs. Yeah, yeah we have three. We have three. We're supposed to get. We. Should, I don't know. I. Is this? I mean, gosh, this is a real uh, heavy, heavy problem here. You I know, can't Veronica, watch God wait. I'm with you. No. I have a. Pro- no. I have a problem with like. I have to be honest. I love that people are sending in their problems. But then I'm picturing this guy, he's at home, he's having problems with the family, and he decides to send us an email? Like, he, he's talking to us? Like, we're going to solve his problem? That's what I said. He's got to I... talk to the family, talk to the daughters, talk to the wife, and come up with a solution. Yeah. I think we're not going to help. Validation. He wants validation from us to say, Yes, you're a good husband. You're a yeah, good father. You're a great guy. Oh, you're Sir, a great guy, bro. You're so cool, man. You have a family, and you let them watch TV and let them cry. That's awesome, bro. Why don't you and get us some ice cream? Big problems. <laughs> I don't think you're a great dad. I don't think you're a great father. Just talk to your family. <laughs> Suck it up, buddy. All right. <laughs> talk to your family. Yeah, and you went all. That's the name of my web. That's the name of my YouTube page. Talk to your family dot com. When all when all else fails, I'm running go to Mike Marino live. <laughs> Dot net. That's what you do. <laughs> All right. Give me another problem. You got a problem? Dear comedy doctors. So I decided after about seven years of processing and finding myself and working on all these outdated patterns that it was time to start considering dating again. And then the pandemic hit. So as doctors of comedy, what would you recommend for a woman in her 20s? For dating again. I, I guess the problem is she wants to date again, but there's a pandemic and she's trying to figure out how to date during a pandemic. Oh, that's well, what you got to do is you got to date virtually until the pandemic's over. And the way you do that is you log on to a guy like myself who happens to be single and you go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Stuart, help me with this one. <laughs> <laughs> is this frozen? <laughs> Stuart is just perplexed. That's what's happening. What, frozen? what a deep thinker he is. Oh. Very deep. It took a long time for you to get that thought. Yeah. Maybe, maybe this could help this lady. When I was dating before, uh, before I got married, I just used to uh, hang out in, in the sexiest clothes that I, that I could outside of uh, our local supermarkets and, uh, and pharmacies. And as women went by, I'd say, you know, I, the muse would kiss me on the lips when I would say things like, hey, chicky, nice butt, you know? And uh, lots of times I would get a lot of nice response for that. So I don't know if you can do that in the pandemic. This lady can do the same thing. But uh, standing outside, six feet apart, of course, a, uh, a, a public place uh, in a very uh, attractive outfit, you might be able to toss your number and get numbers back from, from people. Otherwise, then you got to date virtually. Yeah, or just put your number on your mask as you're walking around. Just put your number on yeah. for a good time call, and it's right? A, That's this classic line. There's such an easy out. All you got to do is say, it's not you. It's the pandemic. <laughs> we can't be together anymore. You know, yeah. I, I think the virtual thing is a problem because those people, not myself, but people who actually watch porn on their computer are now talking to another person they're trying to date and it's not going to compare at all it's going to be very disappointing or they're just going to get very confused and then start <laughs> masturbating while they're talking to someone yeah, they're trying to have good. date that's not good that's a problem exactly. <laughs> i i had problems before the pandemic so that i can't even use the pandemic as an excuse i find it's funny that people are dating online i know a lot of uh, young people are sort of cheating like they're They'll, they're doing they're they're playing it like, you know, it's the classic like STD conversation, which is like, have you been tested? I've been te- been tested. I've been tested. Good, we're good. It's that kind of thing where people uh, are like, do you have COVID? I don't have COVID. I think I don't have COVID. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm yeah. COVID. Why would I have COVID? And then they just have sex. Yeah. That happens. It's happening all over the place. So this woman could just do that, or you could do something called getting to know somebody, <laughs> which, I mean, it sucks, but you know. That's a, that's an option too. If you if you can't meet up, then just learn about each other and then yeah. go on a date when you finally can. Yeah, I got tested. Uh, it came back negative, but it's a personality test. Um, 
I, I'm okay being alone. Like, I don't really need, I'm, I've been alone. Well, I'm very happy by myself. Uh, I'm not, I don't under, even understand the whole dating thing myself. I, I've i never formed, my life was, somebody just came into my life in a certain way. We hit it off, you know, and then the bus ride was over. And that was it. That's how that worked. <laughs> so, well, I've been married 46 years, so I know nothing about dating. I'm done. I don't even know how to spell right. that word. How, can I ask, Stuart, how, how did you meet? If you don't mind. I don't mind anything. Uh, Joy and I uh, were going to uh, the graduate program in, in theater uh, in, at Columbia. And she was an acting student. I was an acting student. And that's how we met. Fell in love. And 46 years later, we're, for the most part, in love. It's <laughs> always that little caveat there. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. That's amazing. What a great story. Congratulations. Yeah. You're lucky. And we worked together. My, my wife and I had worked together in theater, you know, for years and years and years at a place that and from her school, a theater company that she helped to create. So, I mean, it, it, there's, it's all benefit. It's all good. Good woman, good love, good theater. I mean, you can, you, those are the three main food groups, you know, and, and, and I've been very lucky, very fortunate. I guess if I was a real man, I would call that woman up and take her on a date. You can't do that. You can't get close to her. Yeah, I know. But if I was a real man. Uh, well, I just got to say that I think this this young lady is, uh, at least for a while, in trouble as far as dating. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, I, there's real no great solution for that. Yeah. Well, I the, mean, the I, first problem is that men, men her age group are looking for women who are 32. So that's, the, that's one of the biggest problems. Right. Or right. younger than that. I remember being, I did online dating or, you know, it, it was the same thing, virtual, online, whatever, it's the same thing. And uh, they would, uh, guys who were, I was in my mid thirties and guys who were 50 wanted to date a girl between the ages of 19 and 28. Right, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. The problem with dating is like, like you said, the age group. Like there's one thing about younger women and there's older women. The thing with the problem with a younger woman is, you mention a, a group you like and they won't know who it is, like who's Bob Dylan. But the women that are my age and available have been through so much stuff, they're a little angry and they're a little hard. So it's difficult. So I'll just do shows like this and hopefully things will get better. All right, let's, let's, you guys want to move on to another problem? Let's see what we got. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'm homeschooling an eight year old. I'm a single mother and need advice on how to get through the, the days. When, uh. it's, when it's socially appropriate to start drinking. When is it appro socially appropriate <laughs> to start drinking during the day? Always. Just replace your mouthwash with vodka and nobody will know the difference. Okay. All right. On, on vice on it, can I, can I answer this one? Cause I'm going to be doing the same thing. Yes. You're, you're the perfect Ugh. person for that. I have to homeschool my six year old and between March and uh, May, it was a pretty awful, awful time last year. Now they say the teachers are going to be online, like live. So it'll be a little bit better, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the hardest thing is how slow the day goes. You know, you wake up, and, like you make pancakes, then you like, you know, they you play like with Play-Doh, then you take the dog for a walk, then you come back inside and you start school. And it's like, you know, you look at your watch, it's 9.15. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, I, I think the best way to do it is to take breaks. For me personally, I, I you have to let them do some, and listen, do the screen time thing. You know what I mean? Like within reason, we don't want our children to be addicted to the phone or whatever, but we're on our phone and there's a lot of stuff that happens online. So uh, if you need to just stick them in front of a TV show or whatever for half an hour so you can go cry or hold yourself somehow um, and rock back and forth and pray that it's over, then that's what you need to do. <laughs> hold yourself and rock back and forth. What do you think about the drinking though? What She wants to know when she can start drinking. When her husband comes home. Yes, that's right. What, what'd you say, Stuart? When her husband comes home, when, when she's not, when she's not on, on duty. Uh, to she's what? A, she's a single mom. Oh, oh, oh. When, yeah. when, when her husband comes, comes by. Yeah, so I say smoke pot. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> I was going to bring that up. But if you're going to handle an eight-year-old and you're a single mom, you would be greatly appreciated by that child if you were high most of the time. <laughs> Have so much more fun. You'll come up with great creative stuff. 
Very creepy. And then you could send the kid to my YouTube channel and just watch my series. <laughs> you love the whole thing. My series is so much funnier when you smoke marijuana. Yes, <laughs> he'll tell you. Him and his Italian wife were watching it. Just oh go to my God. We've watched, that, we've watched that, that show, and we've, we've been high. We've smoked everything, and it's just hysterical. I'm so happy that I, I, I discovered it. <laughs> and you, you can make great snacks with the eight-year-old. I'm sure they got some great ideas for snacks. Peanut butter on a cracker. Come on. Who's better than us? Nobody. Okay, we need another problem. All right, Stan. Stuart. Stuart. My Stuart baby. Pankin. Yeah. <laughs> My husband refuses to wear a bib when we go out to restaurants. He says it makes him look like a child. How can I get him to wear one? Because he can't give up ribs, and the ribs can't give up getting on his shirts. Carolyn from Nashville, Tennessee. She wants him to wear a bib to protect his shirt. Let, let, as, as a full-figured man who has, <laughs> uh, who has any number of... Uh, I, I spill all the time. And I have actually gone and asked the dentist for those little clips that you put, you know, when they... And I put them on napkins. <laughs> and and uh, then my, this is absolutely true. Uh, I suggest, unless you want to sit way back from the table, which I do, and bend over and, and eat like that, get a paisley. Uh, napkin, uh, you know, something that doesn't show uh, the, the, the spot. So if you drip on it, you're not going to be embarrassed because they're going to blend in. So you won't feel that you're set apart from everybody else. That's my suggestion. Okay. All right. Do uh, Mike or Veronica have uh, any input on how she wants to get the guy to wear a bib? What, what do you think? You let him just be a sloppy you know, who cares? Like, he's the one who's going to look bad. It's like, this whole idea of, like, your husband reflects on you, it's, he's his own person. If he wants to just sit there and just wipe, do like a Rorschach, what is that called, a Rorschach test, Rorschach, like on yeah. his shirt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but she's got to do the laundry. That's the problem. <laughs> Does she? That's the problem. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I yeah. mean, my, my wife knows yeah. a hell of a lot more about laundry than I do. You know, or you go out to lobster restaurants all the time and just eat lobster because they give you a bib and it's socially acceptable. She doesn't don't have they wear to wear bibs at rib restaurants too, like a rib bib. I don't know. What she doesn't have to do the laundry. She can go to. She can get a Mike Marino T-shirt at Mike Marino Live. <laughs> she could do that. Hey, let me tell you something. I don't know what woman wants their husband to wear a bib at a restaurant because everybody's going to be staring at them like they're clowns. Now I've heard of the uh, lobster bib, but that's the only time I've ever heard of that. So the guy should say to his wife, uh, make the ribs, make sure they're nice and tasty, and they're sticky and gooey so nothing falls on my shirt. And that's that. Or he could carry a fake baby doll like this and, and then put like, <laughs> and then have a bib, and then pe people will think that he's feeding and taking care of the baby as he's eating. <laughs> you know, and then the food oh. can fall, and nobody will care. They'll think he's a good dad. How about right. an extra, very elaborate scheme there? How about an extra yeah. large mask yeah. that, that when he's what? not wearing the mask, it will cover his shirt? An extra large mask, I think, could work. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's one of the funniest visuals I've ever gotten in my life. Let Stewart have that moment. He came up with, oh. he could be feeding a baby. That is hilarious. Let's just watch his YouTube, YouTube channel. I'm canceling my YouTube channel right now. You don't even need a baby. You can just put a towel uh, over yourself like the mothers do when they're feeding the babies. Uh. It, it, it solves the problem. I think we've solved the problem. We make one man's life yeah. and one woman's life a hell of a lot happier. Yeah. I personally feel good about myself. I like it. I like it. You guys That's are, a good answer. Good answer. Good answer. You guys are killing it today. All right, I think we flushed that one out. I'm ready for another one if you got one. Hey, comedy doctors. How you doing? A um, little problem within our family here. Uh, I love matchbox cars. I've loved them my whole entire life. Um, but my wife has gotten to a point now where she's tired of me collecting them and displaying them in my office and things like that. Uh, she calls me a Peter Pan and tells me I need to grow up. Um, I don't think she gets it that this is my passion. And is there some advice you can give me uh, that I could talk to her and tell her to kind of like back off and let me do what I'd like to do? All right, man. Thank you. You've got a 
problem marriage, my friend. She should never tell you to grow up. They should tell, no man should ever be told to grow up. Mm. You should follow your... Uh, I would divorce her before I got rid of those matchbook cars. Well, I just have a question. Do you think that she's telling him to grow up when he's wearing his footy pajamas? <laughs> Because uh, I don't have any issue with like, my thing is when it when it's lots of money that comes into like any kind of hobby that's very childish that costs a lot of money unless the guy just makes bank I have no idea but like that's what drives me crazy like I I knew a guy who collected you know lots of figurines and they were all very expensive and it was after a while you're like okay are we done playing with this stuff now because we can't pay our mortgage you know what I mean yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know, man. This guy had That's these things. I think he has these toys since he's a kid. Yeah. They're originals, maybe from back in the 60s. So they're probably collector's items. They might not be worth a lot of money, but that's what he, his, That's what she's referring to as childhood. You don't grow up from that, and you don't touch that, and you don't have a garage sale and get rid of that. You're talking to a guy who got three 1962 G.I. Joe dolls. That's right. That's right. What are they worth? $1,000 a doll. Whoa! Wow, them. What are you doing? No, they got the pull strings. Very the rare. Fuzzy beards, you know the fuzzy beards and the fuzzy hair. Oh, that was the '70s. That's the kung fu grip and the lifelike hair. I got the '60s with the cut. Yeah. You are, you know, Peter Pan. I had all my Hot Wheels from from when I uh, 19. Hot Wheels is the greatest. Yeah. The tracks was the greatest weapon yeah. my mother ever beat the crap That's out of. Right. With. That's right. I had the, the track and I had the case with the cars and then I gave them to my nephew when the, this was very cool. I gave them to my nephew when he was a little kid and you know what? He grew up. You know what he did? He gave them back to me when he was done with them. He wow. took, he took wow. me out to my, my brother's van and he goes, Mike, I got something for you. I go, what? And he gave them back to me like I've outgrown them, but you haven't. <laughs> But it was really cool. The Hot Wheels the cars are great. Yeah. My G.I. Joe doll was a mob boss. Who? Yeah. He was the head of the five families. <laughs> I bet he was. You know, we really haven't helped this man yet. So if anybody has something, you yeah, know, I think we can grow up. How about that? There you go. No, I'm totally kidding. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, who cares what your wife thinks? Whatever. Go sleep in your bunk bed and don't worry about it. So is this Keep what, the toys. Is this what happens when you get married? I have never been married. Does the woman try to change you? That's what uh, I'm Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. hearing a theme here yes. that, that yes. when you get married, yeah. a woman tries to change you. Yes. But men try probably to... try to change women, too. I mean, I think it's 50-50. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to change. Well, the only thing I can suggest to this man, because I am a comedy doctor, is uh, just sit down and really talk to this woman. You know, explain how important these things are and ask her what, what, how that impinges on the rest of his life. Does his collecting cars, you know, does it affect their, their marriage, their love life, their intellectual relationship? I mean, find out what her real objection is. Because to me, collecting things is, is, I don't collect things really, but there's no problem with me. So find out from her what her actual objection is. Is there something, maybe she was scared by a matchbox car when she was a kid. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> you gotta really, you, scared by a matchbox car. Can, can just and ask her what, what the major objection is. Because it doesn't seem harmful to me. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it's a problem. But thank you for letting us know at Comedy Doctors your problem. Um, maybe find out, find something that she's interested in and find a way to incorporate the Matchbox cars and something she likes and do it together. That's a compromise. Okay. Yeah, you got another one. Let's do another one. I have a neighbor who, a neighbor who shall remain nameless. She is a great neighbor. She. She'll get my mail when I'm out of town and even offers to babysit my kids. However, she recently got a dog and it's been crapping all over my lawn. I want to get her to pick it up after want to get her to pick up after the dog, but I'm afraid she might get offended and don't want to ruin our good neighborly relationship. Any advice on how I can broach this conversation? Ruth from West Palm Beach writes. Yeah, here's what she should do. 
tell her to call the, the neighbor and say, hey, you know what? I don't know what happened, but there's this dog in the neighborhood that keeps shitting on my lawn. The other day I went walking out there and I slipped and almost broke my neck. You wouldn't happen to know anybody in the neighborhood that has a dog that would shit on my lawn, do you? <laughs> That's the Italian way. Well, that doesn't sound confrontational at all, Mike. <laughs> Here, 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 here's what I think. He sounds like I, he's done it before. Go ahead. She, go ahead, sir. You should go over, knock on the door, and very nicely say to her, you know, I, I love you, but your dog is, is is defecating on my lawn. And is there any way you could stop and maybe keep it to your place? The other possibility is, at least for a while, and I... It really isn't. You have a plastic bag, you go out there, yeah, I, when my friends, my little girlfriends, not my little girlfriends, my my friends' daughters came over when they were a kid. We used to go on poop patrol around the back of the house, and it was kind of fun, made a game of it. So it's not a real problem if you have to go that route. But I think the first thing you do is you gotta you gotta say, you know, it, it kind of bothers me that your dog is crapping on my lawn. Uh, maybe we can do something. Like that. If she has a problem with you asking her to not let your dog crap on her lawn, then she's not your friend. Like that's pretty exactly. Basic. Friendship. I totally agree with Veronica. I mean, if she's such a great neighbor, why is it happening? Maybe she doesn't know it's happening. And if you're afraid to talk to her about it, then she's probably not that good of a neighbor to begin with. Absolutely. You or could... just, you know, poison her dog. I, I mean, was just going to say that. Man. I think she should go out know. there and shit on her lawn. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. I, I'm new to this kind of show, but I, I don't think either of those suggestions are, are, are good. That's just me. <laughs> I'm new to this show. Hey, so I'm interested in how you made it a game for your kids, Stuart. How did you do that? Yeah. Well, that we just what we did. They we we had two dogs and they pooped in the yard. And when the little girls came over, they were they were kids. They were little kids. We called it poop patrol. I said, "You want to go on poop patrol?" And they said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So they put the plastic bags on their hand and we we picked up the, the dog poop. Uh, and and it was just a game. I mean, we they didn't get a prize or anything unless they happen to collect dog poop. But but that's what we did. We just made it a game, and they kind of enjoyed it. It's how, like, you know, they, they were detectives. They were trying to find where the where did, the poop was. How did you get them to clean the gutters? <laughs> <laughs> I threw the poop up into the gutters. Maybe you should have <laughs> yeah, with the neighbors, uh, is what I think. Just ask, that, ask the neighbor, hey, do you want to come over for a cup of coffee and go on poop patrol? And then you can combine it together. Or maybe, right. yeah. Hey, yeah, I right. just want to say I'm new to this show, but those suggestions about poop parties is not a good idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you suggested it on your website. Don't you have a YouTube channel? You suggested yes. that already. <laughs> Can you imagine if she told her teachers at school, my dad invites my friends over and makes us pick up dog poop in the yard for his party? <laughs> Don't make them pick up dog poop. I, I, I they, they enjoy it. All right, I'm, I'm off. No, I'm I love it, but that. I just, I want to hear, sell it to me. Like, try to get me to do it. I want to hear you, like, try to get me to do it. If I was a kid, like, what would you say to me? Oh, you know something? There are various piles of poop in the yard. In two of those piles, I put a $50 bill. Uh... So find the right pile you can keep the money yeah. and they did it every you time. didn't say anything about the money before okay now Why i get it see that question <laughs> it, that's a, it's like an easter egg hunt okay i get it i get it all right I, yeah she's got to okay invite her over to the yard and just act like you don't notice it she might not know all right i think we helped us i think we helped that lady i'm ready for another problem i got a problem Everybody tells me, wear a helmet, wear a bicycle helmet. Hey, listen, I gotta block myself from the sun. They don't make helmets with a brim like this. Look at this. And I'm not putting a helmet over this. So my problem is, what's more dangerous? Melanoma or a concussion? All right, who wants to take a shot at that one? I would say slow, slow death is probably more is i i think immediate death comes with the no helmet thing melanoma at least is a slow death so you can buy yourself a few years well not to challenge so I, think that, he, I think he could find a he could find a hat that the helmet could go over and still and still protect his face because the problem with with 
people not wearing helmets on bikes or motorcycles, as doctors call them, donor cycles, is that when people get hurt, we all kind of pay. You know, I mean, it increases the insurance goes up, medical bills, hospital, every we we are affected by that. Uh, uh, and so I, I'm a big advocate of protective head coverings. Mikey, you had your hand up there for a second. What did you did you have something you wanted to say? When I was a kid and we rode around on bicycles, nobody wore a helmet. We grew up OK. So I say, if he wants to keep his hat, he'll be fine. You don't need to wear the helmet. Yeah. When I and he looks to... like the type of guy that would end up wearing like a football helmet and won't look good anyway. Yeah. And when we hit our heads, Mike, we knew we hit our heads. That's what kept us from yeah. doing it again. It's called yes. learning. <laughs> That's uh, what the world needs. But I, I'm also curious about a man who's so worried about being safe, videotaping himself on a bicycle for the show. Well, I don't think he should be videotaping himself on the bicycle. I think he's a hypocrite. I think he's missed the whole point. I think it would have been funny if he crashed into a tree. That would have been fantastic. Hey, I and that I would put on my YouTube channel. Mike Marino. <laughs> <laughs> we should have him do it again. We're going to get a hold of him. Okay. We're going to have him do uh, a crash with the helmet, a crash with the hat. See what happens. See what's better. He could have been on a skateboard. You didn't even see the bike. Yeah, he he was doing kind of a bicycle motion though. All right, I think we helped this guy. Let's see. We got another one. We got any more? Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, this is from Todd from Charleston, South Carolina. My wife's friend is now engaged, and the two of them keep arranging couples nights. It would be fine with me, except. Her new, unfa new fiance has a tendency to speak in third in the third person, which makes me want to duct tape his mouth shut. Any ideas? Because it looks like he's unfortunately going to be around for a while. People who talk in the third person. Yeah, I hate that. Why do you talk in the third person? Why does he do it? No, ask him. Oh. Charlie, why do you talk in the third person? See what he says. Or just talk in the third person back to him till he gets annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> till he gets annoyed and he tells you to stop. Yeah. There was a Seinfeld. Wasn't there a Seinfeld episode about Jimmy? Remember that? Yeah. Jimmy likes this. Yeah. Jimmy likes that. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. I only know people who do that joking around, but to do it full fledged is. Yeah. I don't think I could hang out with that person. I would just make excuses to not be with them. Right? I mean, yeah. That's like, I I know somebody whose wife will talk. It's like, if you go to say something, she'll sort of whisper and like mimic what you're saying at the same time. It's really oh, weird. I hate that. Like if you say we went out to a restaurant, she'll go out. To a restaurant. <laughs> really weird. Like you cannot handle it after a while. And then you just stop talking to her. She's trying to do active listening. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. They repeat back to you like a therapist would do that. It's very strange. Yeah. But while you're talking, while you're speaking, yeah, they're, they're it, saying sentences. Spooky. Like a little kid trying to do a, a reading on a, in a film or like a, like a kid who sucks at acting. It's spooky. <laughs> I, you could just have a big party and not invite him and just invite the other. Oh, well, Tom Smith. Tom, we invited Tom Smith. Tom Smith should have been here. Why wasn't Tom Smith here? I don't know why Tom Smith wasn't here. Uh, my friend, my friend's child used to do that. So glad he grew out of it. Okay, that's good. All right, let's do another That's the one. second question from Carrie. <laughs> well, a statement. All right. I recently graduated college, and I'm having a hard time finding a job. Most companies have told me I have no experience, yet I was in college. I can't get experience with the job. I guess uh, my question is, are you hiring? <laughs> Do you want to know we're hiring? Uh, she wants to know if you're hiring. Are we hiring? I do. Maybe next week. Maybe next week you have somebody cover for me. I don't know. Maybe. We're hiring. It's just the pay's not very good. <laughs> we're, we, hey, we're, you know what? That question does make a lot of sense. That doesn't make any sense at yeah. all. Yeah, because you probably all remember the question that we had when we were younger coming up in the business. Well, well, not a question, but the way things were, 
you can't do a Screen Actors Guild project unless you're in the Screen Actors Guild, and you can't get in the Screen Actors Guild unless you're in a Screen Actors Guild project. Yeah. You all remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I just remember getting, finally getting into the union and paying dues for like three years, and then I never got cast in anything ever. <laughs> all I did was like local stuff. <laughs> <laughs> They want us to jump through hoops. Everybody wants you to jump through hoops. Nobody's hiring because we're not, none of us, well, few of us are working. I don't know. Is anything happening? Stuart, you're the actor you here. Yeah. Did you, yeah. Are there is nothing filming, right? Well, there's nothing. There are things filming, but uh, very, very uh, small projects with very limited crews because of the CDC and, and what they have to do. I mean, I no, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, to, you know, I audition and try to do a few voiceovers if I can. Uh, Zoom play readings, which I think are terribly ineffective, just yeah. my opinion. Uh, very unsatisfying. But no, there's nothing going on. I mean, there's certainly nothing that's going to hire a lot of people and get the economy, get the industry back together. People, and people in the industry are always asking for money because there ain't no money, you know, coming in. And right. people, I mean, it's horrible. People are actors, everybody. And losing their jobs, losing their businesses, losing their livelihoods. But no, as far as this young lady who's trying to get a job, well, you know, that's going to be tough for a while, a long time. Let's find out who that person was and make him an intern. <laughs> that's what we call it volunteers. We call them interns when you have a show. That seems like that's what everybody does. It's an intern. A girl told me the other day in my class she wanted to be my intern. Well, even these days, you can't get a survival job because uh, when I, I don't know about you all, but when I was coming up as an actor and an entertainer, you were always told by, let's say, an acting coach, get yourself a survival job. And that survival job normally was you were a waiter or a waitress. That's right. Now you can't even really do that or bartend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm gardening. Isn't that weird? I, I have a I actually really enjoy gardening. So I'm doing like weeding for people and like mulching and really all that stuff. Yeah, because it's it's actually something I feel, you know, I have some control. I just feel I don't know what it is. I said I've seen like a seven praying mantises, which are supposed to be good luck in the last like five jobs you know, two on one. So, so that's exciting. So it's like, Oh, I, I don't get an audition for this. and I don't get to perform here, but I saw a praying mantis. That's incredible. <laughs> Things are looking well, up. My wife, my wife loves gardening. It's keeping her sane during this thing. It really is. It's a great thing to do. It's great. Yeah. I know. So maybe it. start gardening. Don't worry about the money or what's going to happen with your life. Start gardening and you'll feel happier. Yeah. You know, but that, that's an interesting thing. times, it's not the cliche about the door opening and closing, but if you're, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm running into a stone wall here, so I'm going to garden. I'm going to do pottery. I'm going to do, and then somehow the universe will say, that's a positive thing you're doing. I'm going to reward you. I'm going to either give you a job or let you see seven praying mantises. The job will be better, but the bugs aren't bad either. That's very true. And actually, I think because of all this opening the door, Scorsese just called. He's doing an independent film with just me in it. So it's pretty, it, it worked, is what I'm saying. And if you, and if you only saw seven, six praying mantises, you wouldn't have got that. That's right. <laughs> I like going to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> Do what, Mike? They have a website too, don't they, Mike? Home Depot? Yes, it's www.mikemarino.net. <laughs> Could you yeah. imagine? I actually like going to Costco yeah. just to find humor. I went to Costco to get mulch, for real. Mm -hmm. And next to the mulch, they were selling pianos. I <laughs> thought that was hilarious. Then I asked the guy working there, did they have any Steinways? And he said, no, just Kirkland's. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. You should write that down. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just moved recently, so I I've been going to uh, Lowe's, which is like Home Depot, and I've been doing home improvement stuff. You know, I, I actually really enjoy it. Um, the gardening, I you know what I've been doing? I've been cooking. I, I I'm embarrassed to admit I really never cook for myself. I kind of eat out a lot, 
and uh, I just recently decided that I was going to learn how to cook and do some things and you know I'm doing a little cooking and I'm starting to enjoy that look this is a good thing all the way around eventually uh, there's going to be good out of this there's going to be some good come out of this people are being creative getting out of their comfort zones it, it, it's all going to be all right it's going to work out we just got to you got to stick together and and you got to find the we got to find the lightheartedness in it be creative i came up with an idea um, the other day I was going to try do a trick or treat thing online with kids, have them come online and do their costumes and then have the parents already set it up and then they give them the candy. So they're like, you know, like do things like that. My friend Esther Koo was talking about, she signed up for this app where you can pre, you can wrap digital gifts. So a gift wrapper, but like digital, like, you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there. It's, um, we got it. We got to be creative. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. I think at the same time, it's hard to not be around people. And I think yeah. a lot of people when they're not working, I mean, uh, for all of us, we're very social beings. So it's really difficult to, le I mean, legitimately not do stand up. I mean, I think the last show I did was, was March, March 14th. So it's like to think about all that time where you're used to spending your your time in front of, you know, 200 people at this show and 300 people at this show or whatever, and then all of a sudden, nothing. So I can understand where this woman uh, probably also just wants to get out and work because it's uh, something to do. Otherwise, you feel like you're mm -hmm. stir-crazy. Yeah. And I think entertainers, uh, we, we're getting hit really hard because that the, the, the adrenaline and the oxytocin and the dopamine and uh, the serotonin, yeah, yeah. That we get from being on stage and i know i get it because when i get off stage i'm high and we're not getting that now and and we, we're probably going through withdrawals from from not getting that that adrenaline and that rush yeah that's why i started doing heroin <laughs> just me how's it just me how's, it, how's that working out <laughs> My daughter you know, thinks I'm gotta hope we get back to live performing someday soon. This is getting ridiculous. I've been doing a lot of outdoor performances. Yeah. Some of the theaters that I did uh, have now an outdoor place, and they take over a big parking lot. So the last one I did, it was 500 people outside. Thank God it didn't rain, but it makes you question. They come into the area with a mask on, but they sit without the mask and order food. Then when they get up to go to the bathroom, they put the mask on. And when they come back from the bathroom, they take the mask off. Yeah. So it's kind of like, people, uh, 500 people spaced six feet apart. Are they? Spaced? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's kind of like the old, the King has no clothes, but instead it's the King has no mask. The last show I did was with Mike, Mike Marino in Naples. That was the last time I was on a live stage. Really? Yeah. That. And when was that? When was that, Mikey? Like a month ago or two months ago? June. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Yeah, I got some other stuff coming up, but uh, yeah, I miss it, man. Now that I'm talking to you guys, I'm realizing how much I miss it. Well, so, they've opened up some stuff here in New Jersey. Okay. All right. And now they have 25 percent where you can go into a place and have dinner. Right. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of that, we're getting to the end of the show. Um, why don't you guys tell us what you got coming up? Why don't you go first, Marie Mike? You want to go first? Anything you got coming up? I have a good amount of shows here in New Jersey before I head back out to Los Angeles. And all you have to do is go to MikeMarino.net. <laughs> I am running for president of the United States, but you don't mail in a ballot and you don't go in person. You go to my YouTube channel, Mike Marino Live on YouTube. You can pick up a shirt. And a mask. I even have some underwear. They say get the bat right on the backside. <laughs> All right, good. How about you? Thank you, Mikey. How about you, Veronica? Uh, I'm I'm uh, going to be doing a show October 3rd in Union, New Jersey. It's going to be at uh, one of our outdoor. Uh, recreational facilities uh, all pro lineup I'm very excited for that so come on out uh, check it out at uh, uniontownship.com excellent and I've been I'll go to that show I'm not too far away I'd love to go see it yeah sure maybe get up to a guest spot sure <laughs> all right sounds good all right 
Stuart, any, what are you doing? Anything coming up? You want to tell us about how can we find you? What do you, what do you want people to see you at? Well, uh, I, I don't do a uh, stand-up, obviously, but uh, I got a couple of movies coming out that we did before the pandemic. One is called Deep in the Forest, and that's, uh, oh, there's the uh, little poster. And then another one, it's a very sweet movie, Marion Hartley and, and her husband, Jerry Sroka, our dear friends, and she's doing, she just did, and I was, I participated, a movie about, it's a biogra biographical movie about her life, which is very, very sweet. So when those come out in the year 2027, and you can go to a movie theater, uh, please go see them. Also, I have a, a website, mikemarino.net, and, <laughs> and, and, and I, you can get everything you want at that website. Oh yeah, <laughs> and also dinosaurs is going on uh, Disney Plus, so go uh, and Netflix, so go go watch that. Which right. character are you? I'll be watching it. The father. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna throw this out there. All right, we had a great show. I want to thank you all for being here. It was the great part of my job is I get to see old friends and I get to meet new ones. Um, you're very funny. I, I watch you guys before you come on sometimes if I don't know you, and I was like, Veronica, I was laughing this morning. Uh, huh. I was literally laughing out loud, and then I was watching uh, Stuart, one of your interviews about your, your characters and some of your movies and stuff, and it was fascinating. I want to thank you guys so much for being on the show. If you had one piece of advice right now that you could <coughs> give the entire world, one piece of advice in one sentence, I'm going to ask each of you one thing that you would like to say. To this. If the whole world was listening right now, one piece of advice that you would give the whole world. I'll start with Mike. Oh, vote for me for president of the United <laughs> States here in 2020. Easy. We're going to make America Italian again. And don't forget my motto. You don't know nothing. You don't see nothing. You don't say nothing. You don't got nothing to worry about. I won't need four years, three months to straighten everything out. Don't worry about it. I got it. Of course. Thank you, Mikey. Veronica, you got anything? Is something you could say to the whole world? Oh my second. gosh. I know it's a lot of pressure. My bad. I that was a lot of pressure. So you didn't give us any prep for this. I my gosh. That's how, uh, that's how I don't know. know. Just hang in there and try to find stuff to laugh at. That is the, definitely the thing to. I would say it sounds so silly. And, and obviously, I'm a comedian, but I find at the most difficult times in my life, when I hold on to my sense of humor, including when my husband is driving me up a wall, when my kids drive me up a wall, and when life is driving me up a wall. All I do is just say, this is sort of funny, and I'm just lucky that I'm here to, to witness it. So just hang on to that, and uh, don't lose your sense of humor, and you won't lose yourself. Very good. What did you see what happens when you, you didn't think you had anything? That was beautiful. That was, a, <laughs> that was excellent. That was great. All right. We we stalled long enough, Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everything people except for the web website that that but you know, Veronica was great. I, I'll steal from Plato. He says, uh, just remember that everyone you meet is fighting a fierce battle. So just be a little aware of uh, of everybody's problems. And uh, the golden rule ain't a bad ain't a bad thing to uh, to think about as you go through life. And uh, just be kind. Don't be kind to each other. Don't you know? In in I mean, somebody. Didn't somebody we were talking about voices? Was it was it uh, bad to talk about? You know, if if you're not, just don't insult anybody. If you find people that are uncomfortable, if you're if you're doing voices and somebody's uncomfortable, then you stop. Your body is, you move on. But just you know, just be kind to each other. This is a terrible time, and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get through it. And you don't want to regret anything you did in these horrible days when it's over. You know, I, I was watching a program the other day about the universe, and I was watching how this great universe that we live in and the planets. I, by the way, I, nobody told me about Pluto. What, I didn't know when they dropped Pluto for as a planet. Yeah, they just kicked him out. Oh, no, you ruined it. Who canceled that? But uh, I started to realize, I started to realize how insignificant my life really is in the scheme of things. It helps me to not take things so seriously, you know? It helps me to not take things so seriously. I think looking out for each other and making someone else happy is probably the best way you could spend your time and energy. So listen, this has been Comedy Doctors. We're on every Monday night at nine o'clock. Thank you for watching. I wanna thank all our guests, Mike Marino, Veronica Mosley, Stuart Pankin, 
You guys have been awesome. We did some good tonight. We should feel good about ourselves. I love you guys. Thank you very much for watching and good night. Good night.